Here we have an Asus laptop that came in locally and customer said that he was sent over to us from another shop and they told him the problem is the motherboard. The laptop does not power on. And I asked the customer, when did this happen and how did this happen? He said just suddenly he woke up one day and was not able to turn the laptop on. No lights and no signs of life anywhere on the laptop. Now this is not the regular Asus laptop that we usually fix, the ROG model, it's not. The model number on this one is Q526F. It's a touch screen, Q526F. So it's not something that we fix on a regular basis. And we're gonna have to figure out what's wrong with this board. Look at the board, small, tiny. It's like a tablet's motherboard. Nothing much going on on back of the board. I do not see any components, probably under this cover here. Yeah, I do see some components under the cover, but I highly doubt there's anything wrong under this cover. But as far as the rest of the board goes, nothing, no components at all, except for one tiny chip right here. That's the only thing I see on back of the board. And you may find a capacitor here, a capacitor there, but nothing major going on on back of the board. Let's flip the board and look at the charging connector. We're gonna start from here. And right next to the charging connector, we have some MOSFETs. Since I have the charging cable plugged in, let's plug power into the board. And we're gonna test at the drain of the MOSFET and see if we have voltage, if voltage is reaching the board or if the charging cable is good or not. But Big Boss already tries out everything before he gives, before he puts the board on my bench. So he already tried the charging cable. He tries all the basics before he disassembles and put the board on my bench. So I have the charging cable plugged in right here. And do we have 19 volts? Measure here. We have, oh, I'm in resistance mode. Let me go to voltage mode. And you cannot see my meter, but you're gonna have to trust what I'm telling you. We have 19.52. You know what, let me do this. What if I'm lying to you, right? So let's put the meter here. We're gonna measure, maybe you can see both the screen and meter, okay? Let's measure at the source of the MOSFET. We have 19.52 at the drain. We have 19.52 and the second MOSFET, if we measure at the drain, we have 19.52 and we could, we can measure only at the current sense resistor and we should know if 19 volts is passing through. 19.52. Let me disconnect and now we can continue measuring the rest of the board. Let's quickly go over the board and see if there's anything obvious, maybe a burnt component, a blown component, a discolored component, liquid damage, corrosion. There are 101 things that we may be able to find by just visually inspecting the board. So we have a lot of MOSFETs here that we should measure. But before we measure those tiny MOSFETs, I think I'm more interested in the V-core circuit of the board. Because that's a common issue with ROG laptops, gaming laptops, the V-core circuit. So maybe it's the same here. And not much going on. So we have a lot of tiny a lot of small MOSFETs and we have the main V-Core MOSFETs right here. Let's start with the V-Core MOSFETs. Meter in diode mode. And maybe we can start by measuring the gate on those MOSFETs. 0 0.45 voltage drop, that's perfect. And we have 0 0.64 voltage drop, very good. 0 0.4 and look at that we have a short we have a short right here i knew it it's a common problem with asus rog laptops so it looks like the fault 
followed with this model also, not only on gaming laptops. And we have a short here too. Look, we have a short here, and we have a short here. Some customer's phone is ringing. So we have a short here, and we have a short here. Wow, two MOSFETs. What about this one? 0 0.42. Okay, so where should we start? Let's go to resistance mode, and let me measure the gate. Four ohms, and what about here? 3.7 ohms. Four ohms. Since this one has a lower resistance than this one, I think we should start with this MOSFET. The MOSFET is probably faulty, or maybe there's something else causing the MOSFET to short out. We do not know. Is it possible that maybe this capacitor is what's causing the short? This capacitor is not short into ground. Now, what we can do is inject voltage to pinpoint where the short is coming from. Inject voltage and monitor the board under a thermal camera. And what is that? I do not know what that chip is, but we'll go over it. Let me inject voltage one more time quick. We're going to inject voltage at the shorted MOSFET on the left. And we see that chip on the right heat up. And we're going to inject voltage on the MOSFET, the right one. And same thing. We see heat right over here on that chip. So is it possible the chip is bad or one of the MOSFETs are bad? That's a good question because I do not think that we have that chip in stock. So I injected voltage right here, and I injected voltage right here, and for both cases, this chip went hot, this here. So is it possible that we have a problem with this chip, or is it one of those two MOSFETs? There's no way to know unless we start desoldering components and see. ATK1604BH. I do not know what that chip is, and I do not know if we can grab one from an ROG board. I have a lot of donor ASUS ROG boards, but I never seen that chip or never worked with that chip before. Let me measure some capacitors around the chip. Meter in diode mode. No short. And those tiny caps are not going to prevent the laptop from powering on. Big caps are what usually go bad, not the small ones. So the caps, we do not have a short anywhere on those caps. I think we're going to assume the chip is okay for now. And we're going to start with this one here because it's measuring a lower resistance than this one here. That's what I'm going to do. We always have to take an educated guess. Let's remove this MOSFET here and see what happens. The MOSFET is out. Let's wait until the board cools down a bit because you may get the wrong measurement if the board is still burning hot. Maybe apply some alcohol. And now we're going to measure in diet mode. Do we still have a short? If yes, then we're going to put that MOSFET back and we're going to remove the other one, the one on the right. And if we still have a short, we're going to put this one back. And most likely our problem is this chip here. And I'm going to have to look and see if we have that chip on any one of the donor boards that we have in the shop here. If not, then we're going to have to order this chip if we can figure out what this chip is. So, meter in diet mode. And do we have a short? Wow. Wow, the short is gone. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. 0 0.6 voltage drop. Okay. We're going to remove that MOSFET from a donor board. Let's prep the pads. A 
now we do not need this MOSFET anymore. Out. And we're going to grab this one here. 4C0, 9B. Right, and we're all good. We do not need the fume extractor anymore. Thank you very much. And meter in diode mode. And we're going to measure right here. 0 0.6 voltage drop. And we're going to measure here. 0 0.6 voltage drop. If there's nothing else wrong, the board should be a fix. I'm going to hand this to Big Boss to reassemble and test. And I'll be back to finish the video. I'm back, and the laptop did not work. No signs of life at all. I told Big Boss to give me the board again so we can test and see what's going on. I'm going to go over the same MOSFET that we replaced and see if that MOSFET went short again. It could be that there's something else causing that MOSFET to blow, but we're going to have to do more measurements. Meter in diode mode. Do we have a short again on this MOSFET? And we do. The MOSFET went bad again. Let me desolder the MOSFET and then we're going to do more measurements on the board. Probably all the small MOSFETs. Now that the MOSFET is out, let's measure again. We have a short, maybe the board is still hot. And I did mention if the board is too hot, it may give you the wrong reading. So let's pull it down a bit. Is it possible that some other MOSFET went bad? Let's measure now. Do we still have a short? Yeah, we have a short. So it's very possible that the one next to it, this one here, also went bad. Let's remove this one. And it could also be that one of those MOSFETs made the other fail. Very possible. But we're going to desolder this MOSFET and then we're going to measure more MOSFETs on the motherboard. And we're not going to use any of those MOSFETs again. We're going to replace them just in case one of them is causing issues. Measure, no short. Measure, no short. But while at it, let's measure here. Is it possible that this is what's causing the problem? If we go to resistance mode, 10K, we have a resistance of 204K, 1.7 ohms. That's almost that short, 1.7 ohms. One is 236K. What about those? 264K. And this one is good. We already went through this. So right now I'm getting a very low resistance, almost a dead short on this one here. On this one here. And we got low resistance on one of those. I think 70 ohms here or 78 ohms. Actually 100 ohms. I'm reading 100 ohms now. So right now the lowest resistance of them all is the one that we marked this one here. Let's go ahead and remove it. One ohm on a gate is not normal. Let's measure the gate now. What readings do we get? And look at that. Now I'm reading 10k, not one ohm. But I'm reading 10 kilo ohms. And what if we go back to the one that was reading 70 ohms? What readings do we get now? Is it related in any way, shape, or form? 
I have no idea. And we are still reading 74 ohms, 75 ohms. I mean, we're going to assume this one is good. It's not that short and it's not very low, even though anything in the ohms reading is considered low on the gate. But I don't know. I do not know if this one is normal. Should we remove it? Let's remove it. Let's replace it. When in doubt, just replace. So right now we're going to have to replace four MOSFETs. Two small ones and two big ones. Now that we remove this MOSFET, I'm going to keep it on the side before we dispose it. 9K. 10K. <laughs> so the MOSFET is definitely bad. Wow. So we're going to have to replace all those MOSFETs. All of them. One by one. Hopefully nothing else is bad. Let me go over the board one more time. I do not want to keep going back and forth. Just a waste of time. I do not think that we measured those MOSFETs down on the bottom. Three fourteen k. We have nine k, and we have ten k. Let's start by soldering this one. Very nice. And we're going to quickly get rid of this solder blob right here. We know the gate is on the bottom, but just to make sure. I flip it, I take a look. But you can tell that gate is on the bottom by this dot that you see on the bottom left. And the top part is the drain. Now we're gonna press and hold. And squeeze, squeeze, and squeeze. Now, after we solder all the MOSFETs, I'm gonna try the board here on my bench. I'm gonna plug the charging cable, and then we're gonna see if any one of the MOSFETs went bad. And finally, we have one more, if I can find it, right here. And our gate is on the bottom. Right. So the source, three pins are connecting with each other. It's okay if they bridge. All right, and let me grab the charger so we can test. I'm gonna plug the charging cable. Just for like a few seconds. Remove. And I just wanna see if anything blew. I mean, if anything shorted out. Probably not because we did not turn the laptop on, but just something I want to do before I give it to Big Boss. Meter in ohms mode. Let's do it in ohms mode. And 300. Meter in diet mode. What the... What the... Short. It's short. It went short again. And the second MOSFET went short again also. What about the ones that we replaced? Small ones. Same thing. And what about the other one? The other small one that we replaced. And I really thought that we got it. <laughs> Four shorted MOSFETs again. All over again.
Is it possible the ATK chip, the one that showed under the thermal camera, is what's causing the short? This one here? Is that possible? Right now, it could be one of the two options. It could be that the ATK chip that is getting hot under the thermal camera when we inject voltage, that could be the fault. Or if we replace the chip and we still have an issue, then most definitely or most likely it's a CPU related problem. I do not have that chip in stock and I cannot replace it now. I wish those chips are on the ROG boards. I have a lot of ROG boards here, but I never seen that chip before or never had to replace that chip before. Yeah, so we're gonna have to find out what that chip is. You can leave it down in the comments if you know, but I'm gonna have to look it up and we're gonna have to order that very same chip and hope for the best. I'm trying to save this laptop for the customer, but there's so much that we can do. We cannot keep wasting time on one laptop. I already wasted enough time on this one. And we did a process of elimination. That's it, we're gonna end the video right here. I do not have the chip to replace it now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments and we'll do something else in the next video.